Good evening and welcome back to the Shadows of Drakenheim. My name is Monty Martin and I am running the Dungeon Dudes weekly live stream campaign. And I am joined today by some of my very, very good friends. I'm Kelly McLaughlin and I'm going to be playing Wilhelm Wolfsbane, the human swashbuckler rogue. And we're also joined today by... Phil Denitis playing Rudy Whitaker, the shifter eldritch knight. And Joel Gorman playing Wrath, the Asimar Warlock. Thank you as well for joining us once again. If you are just tuning in for the very first time, Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday and sometimes on Tuesdays on our YouTube channel, where we cover everything Dungeons & Dragons, including advice for Dungeon Masters and guides for players. You can check that all out at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. You can also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. You can check us out usually from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube. And also, if you do not want to watch it on YouTube and you like to listen to it instead, uh, we do have the f entire first season and up to date on the second season that Shadows of Drakenheim um, is available as a podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. And with that, let us return once again to the shadows. Drakenheim is no more. For 15 years, we foolishly believed the madness and mayhem of that crumbling city was confined to the ruins. We were wrong. Insidious horrors have crept out of the shadow of Drakenheim into a world unprepared for such nightmares. Tales of strange magic, swirling haze, and unspeakable terrors echo through the villages and towns surrounding that accursed place. Now, the Dusk Wardens, a new band of heroes, are tasked with driving out the seeping tendrils of the spreading darkness before it takes root. Welcome back to the Shadows of Drakenheim. We last left our heroes on the road as they venture forth from the town, from the city of Toddsfeld, the smoke strewn and sick, sickness riddled city upon the Dran River, and head towards the great city of Dransmond on Ash Bay. As you leave your guest lodgings at the Duke of Toddsfeld's castle and travel forth along the trade road that between Toddsfeld and Dransmond, the marshlands here are still well underway, for in the years since the breaking of the Toddsfeld Dam, the uh, area along the river, the Dran River, has been highly prone to flooding. And as you travel, um, for and as you travel through the small town of Glothfen and on horseback towards Dransman, do you make a quick pace of it, or uh, do you take your time? Um. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think that we're probably at a, a relatively steady pace. Toddsfeld, I think, was not the happiest place to be, and we're still kind of looking for, like, we have to meet River. It's been a while now. We're, we're it's been, yeah. Just want to get ahead of the Ly Illyrians a, as well. Yeah, there's a little hustle. Maybe maybe even unbeknownst to us, but we, we, there, there's like this past. We're putting the past behind us. Certainly. Very well, then. As you gallop forward acro across, the signs of civilization, despite the flooding, remain, with uh, farmlands along the rivers and more villages along the roads. 
as you travel, you can see the Dran River begins to widen considerably at this point. Whereas back in Drakenheim, it is maybe 600, 700 feet wide. And as you get to Toddsfeld, it begins to widen up to 1,000 feet. As you get closer to Ash Bay, um, the Dran River really widens up, becoming anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 feet wide, um, depending on how much flooding is, is happening. And you can actually see traces of, of several villages that used to be along the river and areas where the road has diverged in recent years because of the flooding, the increased flooding of the dam uh, that has eroded away the, uh, the, the line of the coast. And it is only after another two days of travel that you crest, uh, you, you crest up and around the bend and you can see the city of Dransmond in the distance. In the wake of the ruin of Drakenheim and years of civil war, Dransmond has remained one of the most important cities in Westmar. Second only in size to Drakenheim itself, the Duke of Dransmond wisely kept himself out of the Civil War, and Dransmond remained prosperous throughout, for it is a bulging port city of cobblestone streets, bridges, and canals of perhaps as much as, as, as even 75,000 people. Um, the bridges and canals are broken up by trade plazas, parks, and fine suburbs full of gracious houses, elegant arcades, and richly endowed homes. A vibrant cultural life in contrast to the ramshackle cobblestone buildings and warehouses that line the bustling harbor that is packed with galleons, carracks, caravels, trading vessels, and single-masted cog ships and square-rigged vessels that form this roughly C-shaped inlet. For Dransmond itself does not span the Dran River. Rather, um, it is just a few miles out from where the Dran River, appropriately, uh, flows into Ash Bay. And so just a few miles in, the river kind of washes up and forms this natural harbor that is large enough that the ships can take the remaining way out into the bay, which has a reputation for being moderately stormy. But by coming in a few miles from, from the river, there's a safe harbor and a bustling walled trade town. Um, you, As you come around and towards the, the, the walls of the city, you can see the that on either side of the harbor, there are flanking two great buildings. The first is Baden Castle, peering out uh, over, over the bay like an admiral inspecting a fleet of ships. And across from it is the beacon, the Tower of Storms, the lighthouse that crackles with this um, lightning-like energy and, and casts a wide beam out over, uh, to, uh, over the harbor itself. There are the steeples of the uh, Cathedral of St. Jordana and the other much smaller steeples of several other chapels and churches that dot throughout the, the area. The long pier that leads out into the, the harbor itself and um, along the outskirts of town, there are uh, rocky cliffs uh, of what are, is called uh, the Murmur Cliffs, where uh, where you where tales are told that there lies the shrine of the old god Nodens, one of the few shrines to the old gods that are still kept in the area. Um, the walled city still has a bit of a bustling shanty town outside it as well as you uh, as you approach um, the the gate uh, and um, I'll have you all just roll me a quick d6 and let's find out uh, about what hour of day you arrive in in town two four six okay 
Well, uh, in, in that case, it is uh, it is late evening, actually, as you uh, arrive uh, in town. The sun is setting, um, casting this reddish light over the entire town uh, as as it goes down over the entire city as as it goes down. And as you uh, scramble through uh, through the gates uh, into the city, the the guards collect a, a toll of a few silvers from each of you, uh, and um, and allow you to pass through into the city. But uh, it is not long after you pass through the gates that a wily-looking foppish boy in a purple cloak rushes up to the group of you and says, Are you Wrath, Rudy, and Wilhelm? How do you know me, boy? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yes. we are. Lad, what's the business with us? He he pulls back his, his cloak a little bit, re revealing the pentagram and eye symbol of the Amethyst Academy. I'm a, I'm Apprentice Caden. I've been waiting for you at the gates basically all day. Every day for the past two weeks, I'm to direct you to to Master River. Well, thank you kindly for waiting for our arrival. I'm sorry I had to go through so much trouble, but lead the way. Follow, follow me. She's she's staying at Kraken Manor. She's arranged accommodations for 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 you all. I'll I'll, I'll bring you through the city. Just mind the alleyways, of course. And uh, the the young apprentice um, leads you through the bustling streets of Dransmond. What's the name again, apprentice? Caden. Uh, I thought Linus was supposed to be sending word to River. It's a shame that that boy had to wait for two weeks while he traveled here. I mean, I knew we were running a little behind schedule because of Schaffberg, but... Well... Hopefully River will understand our um, late coming. Sure, once we've told her what we've been up to, she'll be mighty glad to hear that not only we are okay in a lab, but don't we have some interesting news for her? I think she'll be very excited to hear what we've what we've seen and what we've heard in the past few weeks. Rack mm -hmm. excited for this uh, reunion of family? It is always a treat to see my sister. <laughs> Not convinced, <laughs> Rath, but fair enough. Look, she, we have a working relationship. Um, we are on a mission. It is my duty to the Academy and to, by that extension river, to accomplish this mission. We will update her on our current progress, and we will keep it civil. <laughs> Very well. As you head through the streets of Dransmond, could each of you roll me a d6? Four. A four. And a five. Okay. Coming in through the south gate of Dransmond, you pass through the... Uh, pass along the main thoroughfares and by the ancient, uh, uh, the ancient cathedral of St. Jordana. As you do so, you can see that a crowd of a throng is gathered in the square, and you see that before the cathedral, there is a shaven-haired woman um, tearing at her robes, speaking before the crowd. And she, she speaks out and says, A new light is dawning! A new age is coming! You listened to me once as my throng, and listen to me again now. I say that Lucretia Matthias speaks of a new truth. I have seen it. And she tears open her frock, revealing this bloodied wound in her chest, amongst which a shard of delirium is embedded in her chest. And she says, you need not fear the coming of the light. 
We will turn back the shadows and bring in a new age of heroes. You need only make the pilgrimage. You need only make the journey to see it for yourselves. Oh, this doesn't look good. Um, I was hoping for uh, less delirium issues. Uh, I thought when delirium gets in you, it turns you into a monster. She didn't look like a monster to me. Hey, yeah, or you remember kills in, them. in Schaffberg, uh, it took us a while to realize that people were monsters, so she could just be starting to transform. We don't know that yet, but either way, very concerning. Um, is that jammed I, uh, in her chest? I think uh, it's actually well, in her. Uh, that, oh. And she continues to speak with a fiery voice. The... Um, the people in the throng seem to have a mixed opinion. There, there are others that yell back at her. Um, Go back and die in Drakenheim, you crazy wench! And and um, and others cry out, heretic, heretic! And only for the other, for another person in in the crowd to punch them in the face. And very quickly, a brawl breaks out um, in, in the square, and people start pulling each other, uh, 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 others apart. Um, and before long, uh, it's only a few moments later that the 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 city watch, uh, with shields emblazoned with a cog ship and spears, begin to dis disperse the crowd and tell everyone to calm down and, and shut up and get back to their homes. I um I address one of the town guard. Uh, I, I imagine we're all still on horseback, like trotting through the city, and we and we like stop yeah. to see all of this. Um, so I, I I bring Bishop up near one of the guards, and I, I look I look over at the guard, and I ask, "What's the meaning of this? Uh, seems is there any help or aid that you might need? What's the meaning of this? Uh, uh, the brawls breaking out. We've heard of the falling fire before in Lucretia Matthias." Uh, I had, we heard about that in Schaffberg, yes? There the issues the there as well. The guard speaks up. He's a, from behind his helmet and and, you, and with his chainmail coif, he unpins it from his face and he says, Reckon they're just disturbing the peace as far as I say. Our old high flame keepers taking up cause with a heretic. The... If you want, if you're still looking for a place where you can pray and give good faith to the flame, the Chapel of Good Hope and Flamekeeper Scorchers and Constance are still preaching the good word. But what's happening in the ca there is just just madness. Least of all that we need, giving ever everything else happening these times. You best buy mind your own business, newcomer. Very well, and I turn to you too. All right, so the last time we heard about uh, Falling Fire, was it? That was in Schaffberg, and they ended up being behind part of the plot. Weren't were they? Were they? I, were they? It, I thought they were the Illyrians, no? The, the line being drawn, uh, we encountered, from what I recall, two different occurrences in Schaffberg. Yes, there was delirium, but there was also a creature from another world that infected those. I I can't rem. I do not remember the falling fire being. Uh, Maybe I'm incorrect. Like out of character, Monty did Schaffberg. Were they worshiping the falling fire at that church, or were they worshiping? It the seems like that's what the villagers thought. But as you know, the or the flame keepers there were taken in thrall by that creature. Yeah, but so, there was talk of falling fire in Shaftesbury. Yes, Lo yes there's, loosely. There's talk everywhere of the of people of the falling people following the falling fire. Okay. Yeah. So it's not like a mystery to us. We're like, oh no, this again. Okay. No, no. In fact, even in your travels, you have encountered other people like. Offhandedly, some people have mentioned others that have gone to make the pilgrimage. It just, just here for the high flame keeper uh, of this city, who is the highest authority of the of the church, to have converted 
is seems to be causing some conflict not only converted but jamming the rock that we are here to try to stop into her chest rudy is right good. it's uh it's it should have killed her or mutated her there's i've i've never seen someone survive with such a large piece and still be coherent well, i think this is a third route that we need to consider of what delirium is capable of not only could it mutate and create monsters we've seen it be harnessed for weapons and now we're seeing it where you can have it in you but it doesn't change you now again it might be changing her in ways that we haven't yet seen physical manifestations and mental manifestations might be two very different things uh, it, it's it might require some investigating and i do think we need to bring this to the academy's attention river will want to know about this and, and perhaps this flame keeper needs to come in for an examination we might need to see if if in fact if if, if the church here in dransmond a very well-off city currently is infected with delirium in any capacity it, it could be extremely problematic it's no doubt that this might be why river has brought us here i think we need to go talk to river and see what the academy knows about these fallen fire folks mm. as you pass through uh pass over the canals and across the uh the saint jordana square you move into an area of dransmond led by um caden uh, in, into an area called the, the Seawall Quarter, named so because as you, uh, as you come off one of the canals as, and come up to the Seawall Quarter, there is this large cobblestone um, levee at Seawall, literally, with, with stairs. And um, the, the Seawall Quarter is named because it is built uh, at the point of the worst flood of the Dran River in living memory thus for those of anyone living below the seawall quarter uh hope you like your houses in a flood <laughs> because only those in the seawall quarter and uh actually have the assurance that they live in in somewhere that probably wouldn't get flooded uh in a particularly bad year and as befits this the seawall quarter the those elegant homes and buildings that you saw from the from the distance as you approached the the city of Dransmond are all built here <laughs> for this is the wealthiest district of Dransmond mm -hmm. um and uh and it connects up uh, opposite from the castle in fact castle rock being the other side of the the this is the north end of the of the city uh and from there uh Kevin uh, Caden leads you towards a uh, a large plaza where there are is a uh, a quad of tall apartment style buildings that form uh, several closely connected townhouses and ma and manor houses um, of very fine appointments with their bottom levels made of stone and the upper levels uh, made of uh, that rich Tudor kind of plaster and wood stonework and carved wonderfully and shingled with slate. Uh, and glass windows throughout and warm light within um, and you come round and uh, above one of these doorways is a glorious carving around the door um, the door itself is uh, carved to resemble the um, front prow of a galleon and all around it the is carved a massive squid-like creature a kraken that is that the tentacles of it are coming around and actually form the knobs such that it looks like when the doors open up that you're being embraced by the kraken <laughs> is it at all like uh, wilhelm immediately knows it's a kraken but does it give like any flashbacks to the creature uh, uh, in, in the oh, oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I see the door, and I just, like, I, like, kind of almost fall off my horse, and I'm just like, uh, oh, um, don't mind me, just, uh, something spooked me, don't, anyway. 
Anyway, no problem. Hmm. Maybe it's uh, just a little rad on our way here that you're starting to get a bit weary. It's, uh, it's very tired. Uh, through the through the doors, however, is a sumptuously appointed parlor with upholstered couches um, and low uh, coffee tables, and a, uh, a, a a uniformed staff bringing coffee and whiskey and various bourbons and uh, drinks and wines to. Uh, very wealthy looking fellows, some of which they're also bringing um, tobacco and even hookahs, and all of them enjoying them in this sumptuous lounge with this great furnace of a hearth in, in the center. All appointed throughout are um, gorgeous pieces of artwork uh, in capture it, showing the, the seasides, um, and the whole room is lit with uh, lanterns such that when you look up at the vaulted ceiling, the, the small lanterns create the effect of the sea at night. And the, the floor is a uh, swirling mosaic that, um, that conjures up images of a stormy sea. And uh, as you do so, sit, sitting in a wing-backed chair uh, and standing as, as you come in, into the room is River, um, her, uh, who looks rather quite in place here with her long blue hair and her uh, brownish horns like boats. She actually looks like a figure cast in the waves itself in the midst of, of, of Kraken Manor, uh, were it not for her uh, her purple robes. that uh, She seems to be wearing, wearing much more leisurely clothing uh, at, at this time, and she kind of uh, takes off a pair of glasses, puts down a, down a book that she, she must have been reading, and uh, she, she smiles that wicked smile that halfway through her face, it looks like a warm smile, but on the other side, it just looks wicked. It's just something, it's like, you can never tell with River exactly which direction her facial expressions are going. Uh, but she, she smiles, that uh, sharpened smile, and she says, Welcome. <laughs> tell me all about your very long and interesting journey. I understand you've had a bit of a rough go of it of late. Well, are you sure you want to talk out here? Very true. Very true. Would you like to speak of things more plainly for a moment and have something to eat? I assume that you've just arrived. If you are feeling down to business, though, we can begin immediately and we can I can show you to our suites. Uh, I mean, I would love to accept the pleasantries, but even on the ride in here, there seems to be uh, danger already afoot in Dransman, and it, it might need our attention. Very well. Trahira, uh, she, she calls out to one of the, the, the wait staff. we will take our meal in the suites. And she said, she gestures, thank you, Caden. Uh, and you can, and she, she gestures down to Caden. Caden, why are they carrying all their things? That's your job. Ah, don't get too hard on the lad. You know, we uh, like to keep our positions close, especially after some of the crazy times we've had on our way from... Uh, from our home city. Very well. Caden has been waiting very patiently for you, for you all. Caden, you can go to your room. Come with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and she leads you up to a well-appointed, uh, up the stairs, which in fact lead to a balcony which overlooks the, de the lower area and up to the, the, the suites above. The Kraken Manor appears to only have a small number of rooms here, but all of them are more like apartments than anything else. Yeah, as she leads you through the double doors, there is a private sitting room, which is appointed with a small table and uh, a small bar as well, with several bottles of wine actually listed there. And off of the common room of the suite itself, are uh, four other private rooms and uh, it, its own water closet as well. Um, and so she uh, 
Um, she as she closes the she closes the doors and she speaks a spell of arcane lock as she touches the door again. She says, "You need to come back here." The password is Giggle Shorts. <laughs> the Academy has such fun words about you, don't you? <laughs> giggle Shorts. Yeah. Yes. It hasn't changed much in the past 30 it, years. The, the, do- the door will only open with that password or for you. And I have taken the liberties of booking out this suite for the conceivable future and taking precautions to make sure that we are protected here. If you have any concerns about where you will be staying, you need not worry here. My guardians are also downstairs, disguised, of course. We are uh, safe here. Wilhelm is just jotting it down. He's jot- he's, he pulls out his book and he's writing down giggle shorts and you hear him mumble something about rule number 55, write it down. Yes. Not too long ago, uh, Tredora, who operates the Kraken Manor, she is uh, of of a well uh, a well bred home, and her children have a tendency for for expressing the mage born traits. Several uh, her uncle and one of her nephews and cousins are actually part of the academy, so we've had a long relationship with Kraken Manor and the, its proprietors. We are safe here. Golly, it's a mighty fine accommodations of masses that I've ever stayed in, so I feel a bit, uh, oh, I wouldn't say uncomfortable, but uh, such nasties. Thank you. I mean, the uh, depictions of sea creatures used to be a favorite of mine, but as of late, they stir dark feelings in me, and I don't... I, I couldn't say I'm very comfortable here, but... It is a nice place for for most. I must admit I've enjoyed my comforts here. It's uh I didn't expect you to take this long to reach the coast, but I did hear about your travel troubles in Schaffberg from Linus. I'm very glad to hear that you helped Linus and the villagers of Schaffberg. I have to say I can't imagine what would have happened had you not intervened. So while well, I I'm concerned about the delay, and I was worried for you. I think you did the right thing, and I shudder to think of what would have happened had you not intervened. River, I, uh, go ahead, Rudy. Go ahead. Wrath, she was worried about you. Isn't that sweet? We killed most of the town. <laughs> he's not wrong. He's, he's not wrong. Many were injured or killed. Yep. Um, if we did not intervene, there might be more alive, but under the spell of this monster. Yes, well, I understand that in the process you might have saved Verona von Baden, the Duke's sister and heir. That will be useful for our purposes, should we need to have that contact. The, the Duke himself is famously neutral in his pursuits. He's also very sick. We saw him. You mean the Duke of Toddsfeld? I'm speaking of oh. the Duke of Dransmond. Yes. Toddsfeld. I've heard from Noodles the state of Ludwig von Fritz. Don't laugh, Rudy. Noodles. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, River, if, if I may be blunt, um, the things that occurred in, in Schaffberg, the things we saw in Toddsfeld, and even the things coming in here, I remember when you, when you hired us for the Dusk Wardens, you said that there would be dangers ahead. And I won't lie, I was expecting a little worse than Tierhaven, but... A monster tried to eat my brain in a, in a dark cave in the middle of a swamp, surrounded by villagers that I was trying to discern whether they were innocent people or horrible monstrosities. And it was 
deeply, deeply troubling in, in a way that I don't think I could fully articulate. I can for you, Wilhelm. What he's trying to say is that the hazard pay hasn't been adequate enough. And Wilhelm is looking for a uh, uh, some kind of compensation uh, for the fact that a monster from another world tried to mm. scoop his brain out. Oh, don't forget the leaping brains too that just come right out of people's heads. And they tried will, to yes. There yeah. was yeah, and you know it was just um, I thought I was going to die, and I, I assume Wilhelm? that's part of the job. Yeah, you didn't. You didn't die. You confronted that creature, and you saved those people, and you did not die. And in so doing, you have confirmed everything that I suspected about you and Rudy, and even my brother, about why the three of you are uniquely capable to assist us in this manner. I, um... Thank you. I... Very well. Thank yeah. Oh, thank you, River. Um, True, we are survivors. We do our best, and it's been a an interesting road to not be totally mentally thrown off by the horrors that we have witnessed so far. It's been uh, it's been a ride. I'm sure it has been, and yet they have not consumed you yet. I will be frank, you are not the first group that I have commissioned, but you're the only one still alive. Huh. Um, River, will you be honest with me? What, what wave are we? You're the fourth. <laughs> I thought third time was the charm, but... Where are you getting these people? You're sending them out just to be slaughtered by this darkness. No. Are they even trained? What kind of what kind of backgrounds do they have? Some of them had survived the outskirts of Drakenheim, and I thought that that would prepare them. Others, mercenaries, and others, scavengers, pirates, adventurers of other sorts. But, truth be told, they're... What is out here is concerning, to say the least. And there's a lot happening here in Dransmond. If you are still... I will put it to you this way. If you would like to return home to Tierhaven, I am happy to compensate the two of you as generously as the Academy can. You can go back to your lives, and you don't have to be involved in this anymore. But if you'd like to continue, we need people like you. Rule number 79. If your actions are not for the good of the people, then they are not good actions. River, your words, your words speak true to the lessons that I was taught. We are alive, Rudy, Wrath, together. We overcame insurmountable odds and horrors beyond comprehension. Maybe that's what we are supposed to do. Maybe that is why we're here, I suppose, River. Um, as much as I dream of a warm fire and my own bed, That would be the easy way out. That would be, I have these skills, I have these abilities. All three of us have proven that we are worth our weight. And so, again, like the last time we spoke, I, I have to agree to push forward. Rudy. Maybe mighty tempting for me to go home. I got lots to go home to. My kids, two of them, I'm expecting my grandbabies to come any day now. But you know what? If if I'm not creating a world where those grandbabies can grow up safe without fearing for their lives, fearing for this crazy 
effects of this delirium, then I don't know. I don't know if I could have that sitting on my conscience to not do all I can do to help save people and families, just like my family sitting at home. So I'm not ready yet. What I will ask is that if we can make sure we can send some notes home, let my family know that I'm still alive because they probably have no idea what kind of things I've been through. Absolutely. I uh, would be happy to send a message back to your family. Just write down what you, what, what, what you would like me to say and I will relay it to them and you'll even get a response back. <laughs> Mighty thankful. Thank you because I want to make sure they know I'm okay but that my job's not done yet and that I'll come home when I can. And Wrath, are you still looking to do your job and your duties to the Academy? I am contractually obligated to be here. Uh, unlike these two, but your selflessness does inspire me. I feel I have to do what I need to do for the Academy, yet you do it as an act above that. And that, from what we've been through, I hope you will continue to work for the Academy. They are doing their best to mm. fix this problem and, and bring hope in ways that a preacher with delirium in their chest can't and that dukes and kings they don't have the the foresight that comes with the academy's knowledge and also i really didn't like that tower is really boring some days and and, <laughs> and i really wanted to do something more so i'm yes river i'm happy to continue very well as far as making sure that you are all compensated properly, your room and board here is paid for indefinitely. You need not want of that, and if Wilhelm, if you are looking for a warm bed and a fire to sit beside, your tab is covered while you are here. Thank you. Did you even have a bed when you were living in my barn? I called it my bed. <laughs> in the meantime, Wrath... Mother and father have told me that I am to issue you your academy rings. But I think it might be more useful for you to not take them up at this time. I myself... Remember, I've worked hard <laughs> for many, many, many years. What makes you think I would not want what is, what is owed? Because you may find for the time being, that being recognized as a member of the Academy is to your detriment. It has certainly been to mine over the past several weeks while I have been here in Dransmond. Granted, I have a bit of reputation here, but you may find it best to use your discretion, and it may be to you in your best interest to not wear your rings. Well, it just so happens that our friend Wrath could possibly put those rings on his loose fingers and then keep those fingers in his pocket. <laughs> Maybe part of him would feel like he's with the Academy. By so the way... Very good illusionary <laughs> skills that he can cover up. He's been covering up his robes for a bit and it served him well, trust. I pull yes. off my, my glove and, I, and I'm going to show River my fingers. By Maybe the we, nether, what the Happened. We forgot to mention this part. But perhaps <laughs> this part left was left out of the story. Rath, if you would like to explain the uh, mysterious <laughs> hole that you decided to reach your hand into. I have not learned much in my time with the Academy. One of <laughs> one lesson that continues to fault me is don't put your fingers in there. And here we are. Well, you'll have if to. If you wear have your... any tricks, uh, I would I would be um, ever so grateful. You'll have to wear your rings on the opposite hand. <laughs> Show her that they can move, Rath. Show her. I shudder. What you're going to have to do something about that if you ever want to reach higher uh, uh, <laughs> a higher rank in the academy as well. I'm running out of uh, working fingers. <sighs> 
Oh, wow. I never thought that you wouldn't get promoted at the Academy if you don't have the hands to put it's, the rings on. <laughs> it's it's also a sign of... Uh, it's it's like the, that bar for intelligence. Like, if you can't have that many fingers, what are you? <laughs> Why are we promoting you? <laughs> Very well, then. She... If you wish to take up your rings now, I leave that to your discretion. But she produces a small box within which are three uh, three mithril rings. Now these rings, now remember, these are academy rings, so they have two very simple powers. First of all, they function as a ring of spell storing, but the number of levels of spells that it stores is commensurate with the number of rings you have. You have to wear all the rings for it to work. Okay, and because these are your rings, only you, these rings have been made for you, so only you can attune to them and use their, their power. In addition, the rings themselves can be used to uh, you perform a minor effect that is similar to prestidigitation or mage hand that basically identifies you clearly as Wrath of the Amethyst Academy. So you can, you can, all mages of the academy can invoke their rings uh, when they need to basically invoke oh, the, cool. the, yeah. So by, by doing so, this proves that you're a member of the academy in good standing. Um, and one of the, the perks of it is that um, no noble can deny you room and board if you invoke your rings. By, by the edicts of Lumen, all nobility must grant room and board to any mage of the academy who asks for it. So the, by, by showing your rings, you can do this. Thank you, River. I will keep your, your concerns noted. They, it is, we have already experienced this uh, as close as Tazfeld, or sorry, uh, just outside of it. Uh, we met some Illyrians and we were wise to conceal our mm. not only our affiliation with the academy but our mission they are on a quest indeed we will speak of this shortly but before i move to other matters wilhelm and rudy we believe it is befitting to see that a weapon or suit of armor is made for each of you from the academy's forges what would you you may request a weapon of your choosing and we will see to it that something is made that befits your style what would you like well, i just spent money on my new armor and i did find this i i actually pull out twilight the sword i did find this sword in yet another talking point that we do need to discuss river and that was a uh, ancient elven ruin which uh, hmm. we should discuss further at some point, but can I get your choices though? I just need to know what you before we go into. <laughs> well, I'm trying to decide. Like, I just got a magic sword and a new set of armor, um, so I guess I'll take a better armor. Not a crossbow. Or oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm used to D and D and not being nice to crossbows. Wrath in, goes, or, 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 River goes. What's that? And it's this grumpy old crossbow. <laughs> um, yes, I suppose a new crossbow would suffice. Um, I do have a special request, though. This is a crossbow that my father designed that requires less loading. It has bolts at the ready. So if you could um, perhaps work that into it, I'm sure we can come up with a design. Ready? Um, I kind of take out both my battle axes and I say, if you can make something fancy out of these, that would be mighty fine. I got some, and I clink all my new armor, new fancy elven armor, so I'm good to go. But I got some basic weapons here. Very well. We shall f see to it that a finely crafted axe is made for you. It will be some time before these are ready. They will be made to order for both of you specifically. Thank you kindly. In the meantime, you, should you require anything else, the there is 
One other representative of the Academy is here. The Tower of Storms, the lighthouse on the bay, is the abode of Sundar Stormgale. He is an ornery sort, but I have put in good word with him, and he will provide, uh, should you require potions, scrolls, or other things, please go visit him, and he should have ample supply. He has a small uh, retinue of apprentices that aid him with, uh, with such things, so he is a very good resource as well to consult. The... This issue of these elven ruins fascinates me, and I have uncovered something of interest to us. But there is much to discuss. It seems that there is a, um, further up the coast, along the east side of the bay, there is a ruin that is called Starwatch Lighthouse. From what I can tell, it's never actually been used as a lighthouse. But it is a tall, seared cluster of towers made of a strange stone not native to the area. This may be an elven ruin, but the locals say that there is no way in. It was... Um... In Schaffberg, we went into the, the swamp nearby and found an elven ruin, and Rath, perhaps you would be better at explaining this, but there seems to be a, a connection between the, the, the elven ruins and delirium causing um, a, 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 a thinning, a thin, hmm. it was thin. Uh, Rath... Perhaps you can elaborate. I'm no good at this. I, I don't understand the, 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 the jargon. The borders between the worlds almost did not exist in this place, like a crossing. There was a gateway that was damaged. It was our only chance to prevent this creature from returning. I'm sure there are others like it in these elven runes. There is... This is not the first I've heard of these things. For in Drakenheim itself, there were rifts appearing. Rifts to the abyss and hell itself. These were much worse, mind you, and creatures were already passing through them. And a small group, in, backed by the Academy, managed to keep them closed. But this does not bode well. It may be worth investigating this Starwatch lighthouse at some point, but there are other problems around Dransman that might be more might be of equally pressing concern. <sighs> Dransman is built where the Dran River empties into Ash Bay. The Dran River flows through Drakenheim hundreds, thousands of miles even, but it's a wide river. And if anything could get far out from Drakenheim, the river would be the way. And Dransmund is where it would end up. <sighs> There's more to it than this. Dransmund is a major trade hub. Merchants flock here, not just from across Westamar, but from Illyria, Caspia, the whole continent, and even from continents beyond. Places where the Academy does not have the privileges nor the influence that it does here in the continent. Of late, there is one commodity that eclipses all others in value in Dransmond. I'll give you one guess what it is. Well... It's going to be delirium. it's it's delirium, right, guys? It's delirium. It's, it's, it's yep. Okay. Okay. We already heard first from uh, from what's her name, the Duke's daughter, uh, that they're already know it's coming through here. So I assume it's that. Yes. I mean, also importantly, and I would like you, River, to be open with us. Uh, it's going to take 
honesty on all sides for us to get to the bottom of these mysteries. But it seems that um, the indication is that the Academy has been buying delirium from Dransman as well. Yes, of course we have been. This is the, this, oh. uh, there's, there's no, that's no secret at all. The, but there's a few things to understand. Even though we have a foothold in Drakenheim, the city itself is still a battleground, and it's far too dangerous for us to extract the quantities of Drakenheim that our industry demands. Thus, more has fallen, has still been appearing in the markets here in Dransmund, and I have been a representative with House von Baden and its merchants and traders to purchase it on behalf of the academy the other reality is that although we still we have reclaimed the tower of drakenheim it will be months if not years before that dra the tower is repaired and is actually equipped with the facilities for us to engage in industry thus we have to ship the delirium out of the city anyways so it is convenient for us to procure it here of late, we have been being outbid. By whom? That's what I want to know. Hmm. This was our concern. The illegal trade seems to go above and beyond the Academy's acquisition. We have heard and seen those just, you know, everyday traders carrying the delirium almost openly. Um, it was very concerning. Indeed. You see, there are a fair number of hedge wizards dwelling in Dransmund as well. Wizards who are trained by the Academy, but not in good standing with the Guild. They don't have access to the privileges that members like Wrath and I do, which means that they have to procure delirium for their work independently. Most of them waste it, but I have no doubt that some of them are buying it. But they wouldn't have the capital to buy, outbid the Academy. I suppose, and, and Rudy, you can back me up on this, but I, I suppose if we are to listen to Wrath, who is our new new friend here, that it is better, I guess, that the delirium falls into the hands of of, of science and, and 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 progression rather than what it's what we've seen it being used for just by emerging wildly in the in the area. Hmm. So I suppose you buying the delirium it, it is kind of interesting that the delirium flows from Drakenheim down the river here. And you came from Drakenheim to buy it back. Well, from what I understand, <laughs> at least from talking with Duke von Baden, the delirium, the, this is the thing. There's no doubt that delirium is flowing down the river. At all. The, but here's the thing. Delirium is dense. Delirium is heavy. And I could believe that slivers and fragments of it would be carried down the river. It seems plausible. But large crystals and geodes, massive clusters. Well, no one has sold a massive cluster in the market here. Large crystals and geodes have been bought and sold by me personally from Von Baden's traders. The only way for something like that to get here is if someone brought it here to sell it. And it's not the Academy. Interesting. No, oh, and the problem that I'm having is that Von Von Baden, the daughter, she told us that it was just the Academy buying it. And I'm now mighty curious about why she didn't tell us about these new buyers that I feel like she would have known about. It's possible that she does not. She mm. may not be fully aware of all of her brother's business. And in fact, to be perfectly frank, it's 
The Von Badens are only one of many possible people that are buying and selling it. There are certainly others dealing in it and trading in it that have nothing to do with me. And in fact, I have tried working with, I have tried myself to make inroads and even tried to use some of my own magic to discern who it might be. But they have protections. This means that they are getting helped by someone with magic of their own. Mm. This means someone does not want the Academy to know who is buying the delirium. Well, that doesn't bode very well for me. <sighs> it doesn't bode very well for them either. Because we're going to find out who is acquiring large quantities of delirium, what their purpose is, and we will reacquire it for the Academy so it can be put in its rightful place. Well, it's a good thing Bomb Baden owes us a favor. We can get some more information, maybe from her brother. It's Another possible. magical party is outbidding the Academy. This calls for investigation. It's entirely possible. After all, the Amethyst Academy is not the only mage guild in the world. Hmm. Interesting. But any as powerful as the Academy? I feel like the Academy. Oh no, not none as none nearly as powerful as the Amethyst Academy. Mm -hmm. Certainly not. Preposterous. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Why are we laughing? Stop laughing. Uh, one other quick concern on on our way in here. Something that um, you may not know about. Uh, I've never seen anything like this. There was a. A uh, woman of uh, the, the supposed falling fire who had jammed a piece of delirium into her chest. Mm. Now, I'm sure that beats anything you've seen in Drakenheim, but people are jamming delirium into their chest and seem to be uh, uh, saying that they're okay and that it's a new a new path. Be fair, doing it on purpose. Someone else might have done it for her. Uh, somebody may have jammed the delirium into her chest, and uh, but it's she, there now. She, she seemed mighty okay with it. She seemed mighty fine with having she it. She might have fallen chest. on it and then just never removed it. We believe I that. Suspect. We believe I'm not sure how that it ended up in her. This is what happens to those who finish their pilgrimage of the falling fire. Uh, oh, so that's a thing that, a... that people are doing. Yes, they Stick travel. They travel to Drakenheim. And they return with the delirium in their chests. Not many, mind you, but some. And we have been very interested in finding out exactly what the ma manner of this work is. And it could very well be. The followers of the Falling Fire have converted many to their cause. And they have resources. They have wealth. They have money. There are some amongst the nobility that have taken up with them, and many amongst the common folk. It could very well be that the Falling Fire are the ones trying to acquire the Delirium for that very purpose. Seems a mystery is afoot. Indeed. Some people are so weird, and I'm petting Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> and we yes, all Bruce, turn and look at you. They are so weird. Now, there was one more thing that came to mind is when we met the Illyrians, they were telling us their feelings around delirium and what it meant for them. Do you think there's any way that they would buy it just to destroy it? Seems awfully wasteful, but they are crazy zealots. Just to keep in mind, I guess. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily put rational thought. I wouldn't necessarily associate rational thought with the paladins of the Silver Order. And, I mean, as short-tempered as they are, I don't necessarily think that they're fools, but they've done f more foolish things in the past. How close of an eye do you think that we should be take keeping on the Illyrians? I, I assume you're aware of their march towards Drakenheim and their Indeed. their goals. They'll be here, certainly, and I would be wary of them, as they do. They might be looking for the very same things we are. So, a mysterious lighthouse, possibly an elven ruin, and the mystery and Dransman of who is outbidding. 
the uh, Amethyst Academy. Well, at least there's no monsters or mayhem. Oh, oh about that. There is. What? Oh, damn. <laughs> yes. Ah, oh, nuts. <laughs> <laughs> the... If all of this weren't enough, it is a well-known fact that now the waters of the Drown River are contaminated and not to drink them. And nevertheless, people do. They get sick. <laughs> but in Dransman, something stranger is happening. People are get falling ill, getting sick. And, well, you'll see it. It happens almost every day. Someone walks out to the pier, screaming, tears their clothes off, and throws themselves into the waves and drowns. Screaming, just screaming, or screaming something specific? I mean, I'm pretty sure I saw Wrath do that in the caves that we were in, but... <laughs> they... That is a ritual. <laughs> they... No, they, they do. They go out, leap off the pier and they swim until ostensibly their deaths sometimes a few of them have recovered only to die of some sickness usually within a day some people have tried to stop them that is it's some sickness and they that has been spreading at least from drinking the water and if that weren't enough there have been some grisly killings in the streets as well uh -oh. People ripped to shreds. I do not think it is people ripping other people to shreds in the streets. Now we've seen some strange things in Schaffberg of folks getting their minds taken over and doing some things that they normally wouldn't do, but are, are there any indications about them making their way towards jumping off or does it just come out of nowhere it doesn't come out of nowhere usually a few days earlier they start showing signs of sickness they begin breaking out in a sweat and drinking inordinate quantities of water also from the river are we concerned at all that it could be the, the same sort of monster as in Schaffberg I, is that a concern? Should we be, um... Hmm. Sounds like a different sickness to me. Sounds like... Especially if they're going after contaminated water. That didn't have any effect. It was getting them to that monster that really turned their minds hmm. in Schaffberg, right? So nobody hooked up to, to, to weird devices or, um... No brains missing. No? The people that throw themselves off the pier, they swim, and boats have gone out to try to find them. And once in a while they have been found, swimming and swimming and swimming and swimming. Others, I, I suppose, drown. But those that have been recovered, they, they die of some choking sickness within a day. It's like they can't breathe. Choking sickness. Interesting. And the and the people being attacked in the streets and ripped apart. Do they show, or is it known that if they show any signs before this happens, or is it just regular folk that this has happened to? I leave that to you. The city watch is completely useless in this respect, predictably so. But I do have some leads that you may want to investigate. Very well. Ready. Uh, it sounds like this is the most pressing matter. Uh, the outbidding of the delirium and the elven ruin uh, do not necessarily involve people getting ripped to shreds in the streets. So if we suspect it could be linked to delirium, then I, I would say this should be our first course of action. R Rudy, as sheriff, your thoughts well of course people are always our number one concern that's what got us into this is protecting the people and i think regardless of if they're you know from our hometown or from dransmond it, 
it's a priority to look and it may lead us in the direction of the delirium as well potentially even to the lighthouse who knows how this is all connected mm. but it can't be a coincidence that delirium is coming in and out of here and these people are acting out of their minds it's well known that it's been happening usually every two or three days mm. someone walks to the edge of the pier and throws themselves off so i would recommend if you head down to the piers it may only take you a few days before you find new lead that you might be able to trace back but there was another killing last night in the streets the from what i understand the dock master's assistant his boy found it first you may want to go talk to the dock master and see if you can find out where this was and if it's been cleaned up yet. Pier seems to be our first one. Now, Wrath, I know it's going to sound mighty crazy, but maybe I'm just falling in line with how we're thinking about this, but does Bruce say anything weird coming in this town? Any feelings? Any thinness? Are you asking me to speak with Bruce? I would love to. I absolutely love talking to Bruce. He is my favorite. I hope I'm, I'm so starting to speak your language now. Rudy, that you've kind of coming around and embracing. Wilhelm, take some notes. <laughs> Bruce. And <laughs> what is it? Have have you sensed anything like we felt there are in the in the under uh in the elven ruins, those that old temple? Buried mm. deep in the, below the earth. There is a feeling I don't like water, first of all. You should know that. I do know that, and I will keep you far away from it. But there are many, many, many fish and lots of rats in the city. And I think that they're delicious, and I want one to eat. Your hunger is insatiable. On our journey to discover how everyone is being ripped to shreds and drowning, I will feed you. It will be my top priority. Roth, I'm only catching one half of this conversation. And what I just gathered is we asked you to look for clues with, with your cat. And the, the assumption that I'm getting is that the cat asked to be fed. I'm starting to think that Bruce might just be a pretty standard cat and you just know when to feed it. I will ignore your insubordination towards Bruce. He'll give us the information if he senses it. If he doesn't sense anything now, that's that's fine. But make sure you keep that connection open just in case because he was mighty helpful in the last place in discovering these thin spots. Rudy, are you now, like, that's just Wrath. That's just Wrath coming up. He's magical. Like, it's Rudy, it appears that the connection you have with your little one is in line with mine. I hope that your companion teaches you the ways of the cosmos as well. Is it a pets thing? Like, I, I haven't owned many pets in a while. Like, is this just what happens when you... R River speaks up. All I can tell you is that he could, he didn't, he couldn't even pull off the simplest cantrip until the cat came into his life. So if the cat's helping him work his magic, it might be worth tolerating it. Oh, very well. Um, I've tolerated it this far. far. I'm just curious. I'm curious to understand the one-sided conversations that I hear. But it's for the best. If Bruce's voice were to enter your mind, it would collapse like a thousand suns swirling together into a giant black hole. Your thoughts would be sucked in and lost, and you would experience something beyond death. Yet you talk to it freely. I'm beginning to understand, Wrath. I'm beginning to understand. Wilhelm, all I've learned so far on this journey since we left home was that we not only just need to tolerate the craziness that's happening around us, but maybe we need to embrace the things we don't understand. And if it means that we can get further on our journey, 
it may sound a bit crazy at first, but I, I think it's the right route to start to to dig into this a little bit. Rudy is right. We must be more open to what this world throws at us. It has become a little crazier as of late. And the things that we might see as we chase down these delirium leads may start to make you question your own reality. It is important to stay grounded and focused. Very well. River continues. There are There is much to investigate here in Dransmond. This is why I've secured us these accommodations here. I will be in and out of the city myself on various business. If you do have need of me, or need to contact me, you can do so here. And she uh, point, points to um, a small um, obelisk that is in the room. You may use this to send a sending spell to reach me once per day. If I'm, if I'm not here, but there's a good chance that I will be if you need any help. You can also contact Sun, uh, um, Sundar Stormgale as well if you do need other urgent help in, in anything. But be aware that the delicate issue of these, if there are enemies that are acting against us here, whether it is the Silver Order or the followers of the Falling Fire or someone that does not want us to know where the delirium is going, Sundar and myself are known in the city, and so it is important for us to remain at arm's length in these situations. If we are otherwise known to be collaborating with each other, it could be problematic. All right, we'll keep it to ourselves going forward. I know we've had to keep it pretty secret to stay out of trouble already, so I think, gentlemen, we can continue to be discreet. Mm. Discretion's my middle name. Is it really? I didn't no. know that. No, it's, it's sorry, that was, a, that was an old saying. Um, a very literal <laughs> saying, if you're saying that your middle name is... is it's, okay, let me... I guess I did not know your middle name. I understand that we are now sharing not, more. I knew you better not, than that. It's not discretion. Discretion. Okay, you know, guys. Um, I. I will. What's I will he keep... talking about? You <laughs> have a middle name. Don't worry about it. It's it's fine. I. Moving on to the docks, right? Right. Got to speak to the dock master. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I suspect foul will play. Well, in that case. I leave this in your very capable hands. Bear in mind, remember, no one else has been able to survive what you've seen so far. There was only one other group that I know of that faced the kinds of horrors that you three have. Are, are they okay? <laughs> oh, they're, they're alive and they're still causing trouble. What? They're the troublemakers in Drakenheim. Ah. We've heard mm. about some of the craziness of Drakenheim. Mm. Yeah, yeah that, that's somewhere we don't need to be right now. No. <laughs> well. well, when when you're ready to investigate these the delirium trade a little bit further, or you want to investigate the lighthouse, come to me and I'll have some more, and I'll see if I can find some other leads for you to follow as well. Very well. Uh, just a quick question. When we find a person running to the docks to jump into the water, uh, are we to question them or, or use them to trail back, follow? Hmm. I assume that... you can figure that out. Right. I'm an investigator. I will. You can count on me, River. <laughs> us. You're really selling us. I, I thought you had her earlier with the whole selling and, you know, the coming around to get more money, but then. Raph, it's been a really long few months. Okay, I, 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 I would blowing it. <laughs> I would accept some leniency on on my efforts. I'm used to Tearhaven for the past eight years. It's um, 
It's a bit much. It's a bit much. Beyond this, uh, as you as you go to depart, she she gives you each a purse of three hundred gold pieces. Ooh. And two potions of greater healing. Each. Yes. Huh. I'm a wealthy man. River, now might be a good time, but we have acquired some more delirium for the academy. Excellent. I will see to it that uh, you are properly that uh, tally it up for me, and I and I will see to it that you are properly compensated for its market value. Show sure the the maid one that we found. Pearl power. Oh yes, the. We acquired this in the Elven Ruins. Linus it told me of this. Mm -hmm. It looks like someone might know of one of our manufacturing processes. It is similar to some of the designs that we have created, but not exactly the same. We have discovered a series of spells and arcane catalysts that allow delirium to be worked with. Normally, under most circumstances, delirium is completely impervious to damage, but it can be damaged with magical weapons and with certain spells. However, normally when it does so, it crumbles and shatters and releases wild magic. But through a series of, of, series of spells, we can render it stable to work with it, to create magic items with it. These processes, we have hoped, have been known only to us. But it would seem that someone else has some other ideas. Well, sounds like berries to me. If that's the case, it's just more evidence that there is someone perhaps working directly against the Academy that want that it wants to subvert our methods and imp imp and seize our assets well, we will discover the true nature of these imposters and put an end to their bidding war with the academy excellent very well Shall we take our break here and come back afterwards? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Okay. And we are back from our short rest. We have finished our consumables and are ready to dive into more adventure. If you're enjoying the stream and you want to help support our work, please make sure to check us out on Patreon. You can find out how by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. We also have a phenomenal Discord community that is exclusive for our patrons. And if you join us on Discord, you can chat with all of us about all things Drakenheim, all things D&D, get behind the scenes stuff, and also take part in our monthly Q&As by submitting questions and our monthly monthly writer room, which uh, happens on the Discord channel itself. So if you are joining us on Patreon, make sure to jump into Discord and join us there. Yeah, we will be having our uh, patron submitted Q&A live stream on Thursday uh, this this uh, upcoming week. So uh, those are it will be a, um, a campaign planning workshop with our patron submitted questions. So if you're interested in sending in questions for that, uh, and are on our Patreon already, please get in there and get those questions in uh, by Wednesday night so we can uh, hopefully answer them for you. <laughs> First, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store. We can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirts, including classics like Yes, Yes, Yes and Troll Killer, but also the new ones from Shadows of Drakenheim, like Way Bigger Than Ducks and the Dusk Wardens. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Uh, in our game tonight, we use a variety of incredible assets produced by talented artists. They have graciously given us their permission to use these assets in our stream games, but you can use them at your table, too. We encourage you to check out and support these amazing creators. We've got Roll20 with the virtual tabletop battle maps by Alex Vendar of Neutral Party and Ross McConnell of Two Minute Tabletop. We've got custom maps created using Dungeon Fog and Wonder Draft. Some player character artwork by Jeremy Cole, which is amazing. NPC token artwork by Matthias Bourbon. You see it in the game. Uh, we've got monster, monster token artwork from D&D 5e Monster Manual and other source books. Special uh, spell effects uh, tokens by Gabriel Picard and 
music by Tabletop Audio. So please, please, please support these amazing creators. Fantastic. I believe that uh, brings us right back into it. Yeah. Awesome. So following your meeting with River at Kraken Manor and imbibing maybe a light meal, what would you like to do first? You've got quite an agenda ahead of you. Well, I suppose first things first is head to the docks as instructed and, and search for clues. I imagine that we should be investigating the uh, grisly murders and we're, we're to talk to the dock master to see if... Um, yes, from what River understands, several of the dock workers have been killed in these grisly ways. And so the dock master would be... Uh, at least be able to give you some information, perhaps, on where and when and who these these grisly killings affected. Rudy, Raph, what are your thoughts on the matter? We have uh, much to do. Well, I think the most recent thing is these Marlins. So, talking to the Dog Master, I think it's the most efficient way to get the most recent information about it. I don't think we should let this one go too cold for too long. But I think, again, it may lead us to some sort of delirium-based problem, which may get us back to investigating the delirium around Ransman. So I say we start there. What do you think, Rath? We, um, we should find out who the latest victims were and work backwards there's a chance that they might have had close contact with whatever caused them to have this serious affliction of screaming and jumping into water or being mauled. Or they might have a connection with the other victims. I say we start with those most recently deceased. Then I suppose we're heading to the harbor. Okay. So the... There are several, um, the, the whole kind of C-shaped area that Dransman surrounds is that water area is called the harbor at large. But the central most part of the, the, the city kind of, if you imagine that the city is kind of like this horseshoe pattern, the central most uh, uh, part of it um, the, are the, the, shi the, the shipyards, the high pier, and, the, the, and Stone Key. And at Stone Key lies the Dock Master's Tower. Um, and so you head down uh, from the uh, from uh, the, the seawall quarter uh, through uh, once again through St. Jordana's Square where the chaos has subsided from ear earlier and down uh, through uh, kind of the lower market, an area known as Cabbage Town Market and into uh, the the waterfront area of Stone Key. There um, at Stone Key is well built up with this large stone wharf with wooden and stone piers stretching out into the harbor proper. There are dozens of uh, trading vessels and ships tied up here, some large, some small. Uh, everything from great galleys and caravels that are ocean worthy to uh, smaller keel ships and uh, fisher boats that are all tied up along. The whole area stinks of rotting fish and seawater. And the um, and as you head down as well, you can actually see that that uh, it's quite cloudy and overcast in the evenings in, in Dransman. And there's actually a pretty thick mist hanging over the river itself uh, and heading out into the bay. And so as you, um, uh, as you come down, it's later on in the evening and many of the dock workers are actually closing, closing up shop. But as you approach the dock master's tower, which is this, um, it's not quite a lighthouse building, but it's this square kind of fortified building that actually has a, cr a huge crane coming off of it. And there's a pair of massive, um, uh, massive galleys that are out on this stone pier that, it, that um, the, the tower is at the end of the pier. And there's this crane that, at the top that can service these large ships of unloading and loading cargo. And as, as you do so, you can see that there are many sailors and dock workers that are actually uh, finishing up 
uh, for the day. Um, but as you get closer to the Dock Master's Tower, uh, you can actually hear um, someone yelling um, and banging on the door. There's this ta the Dock Master's Tower has this long stone staircase that snakes around to it to this large door, and there's this portly man in um in what looks to be a a, a kind of a, a jerkin and pant and pants with with a, with what looks like to be an oversized admiral's hat with a feather co coming out of it and he's pounding on the door uh and he's sh is sharing camp 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 and we're walking up to this yeah <laughs> Uh, seems distressed. <laughs> he, he, he's, he's, he's on the stairs. He, he, he was like, "Camp, get out of there! Come on, get! Don't, don't, you know, don't you know? Just get out of there, you know? Come on, get out! I've got to go home, and if you've got, you've got my keys in there, you've got to come out." Sir, you're making a mighty fine ruckus around here. What is going on in there? The 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 portly man turns around to you, and he his uh he, he's. He has like a really tiny face, <laughs> but a really big head. <laughs> like the proportions are just slightly off. <laughs> um, and uh, he, he turns around and looks at you with these these beady eyes and says, "Don't you know who you're talking to? I am Harbor Master Dogberry, and I am minding my own business and dealing with my own problems with my own staff. Thank you very much." You are on dock property, and you will answer to me while you are here. Well, Harbor Master Dogberry, this is very nice to meet you. My name is Rudy Whitaker. I'm the sheriff of one of the towns around Westmar. And uh, we've actually been sent here to talk to you, but is there anything that we can help you out with to, to make sure that we can have some time before you... Sounds like you want to head home for the evening. Ah, so you're a lawman, eh? Well, in that case, why well, don't you... Woman. <laughs> begging your pardon now if you are uh, 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 you want to be the strong arm of the law well my man Kemp has locked himself in the office because he has resolved to stay here this evening because he is too afraid to go home for fear of being torn to shreds by monsters well I've heard that's been a mighty problem that's been happening in this area and I mean if you need to get into a locked building I, I have a mighty fine you know uh, partners here that might be able to get you in. Wilhelm, do you mind taking a look at this lock so we can get the Harbor Master's keys? Absolutely. I'd very much uh, like to talk to uh, this this camp fellow as well and see exactly what it is that uh, that scares him so much. But why don't we get this uh, door He's open? He's been yelling something crazy about getting eaten up by rats and thrown into the bay and head for lunch just because his friends have all died in the past week. Well, fair enough. Seems good reason to be scared if all of your friends are dying. Um, well, that doesn't mean that he can stay here. I tell him, oh. you, you can sleep anywhere you want. You just can't sleep here. Well, why don't we... We might be able to uh, escort him home, so why don't we get this door open for you? And I'm going to come up and take out my thieves' tools and start picking the lock. Great. Armor master. Give me a thief recheck. <laughs> <laughs> um is is the these these attacks have they been a recent occurrence or something that's been going on for quite some time well if i have it out, i have it out that there's a smuggler's ring operating in this town and they are trying to shut down a legitimate businessman like myself by targeting my workers they aren't showing up for for work you see, because they're all afraid, of course, that the smugglers are going to tear them apart, make it look like it was done by a bunch of wild dogs. Horrible way to die, mind you. Now that I've apologized to all the widows and uh, the widowers about their m much apologies, but we I've got a business to run. These ships don't unload themselves, and if people aren't going to be coming into work for fear of getting stabbed and murdered and horribly maimed and killed, well, what's a good capitalist to do? Well, hopefully get some help, which is what we're here to to investigate well Find out what's going on uh, well we, we've got some out of town our sheriff showing us the business then 
How, how about that? How's that lock coming there, Phil? 26. Uh, I assume. <laughs> uh, it seems to be open now, sir. Uh, why don't we all go in together and see what uh, what issues there are? Uh, let's go in there. Camp, we're coming in, and this fine lady has some very large axes, so if you're afraid of getting ripped apart, well, you picked the wrong fight today, haven't you then, eh, boy? Of course I'll put them away if it's going to cause any trouble, but we're just here to to see what's what and ask some questions about what may have been seen by all these terrible instances that have been happening around this area. Uh, Camp, we're, we're here to protect you. <laughs> we'd like to ask you a few questions. You are under our protection. We have fought far worse don't than what you Don't make me go fear. home. I don't want to walk home alone. You won't. <laughs> that is why we are here, Cap. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna slowly, kind of push the door open, giving a very <laughs> quick eye inside, as I do. Um, the this is the lower floor of the doc, ma uh, the doc master's office. It's it's well attended, but there's a there's a trap door lead leading uh, and a set of stairs le leading upwards, and you can already hear uh, the footsteps running back up the stairs. Harbor Master, the latest attacks. Do you? When was the most recent one? Oh well, you know it was last night, right? Someone that Kemp knew. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Kemp said he saw it. He said he saw it on his way to where he was. He, I, Kemp, Kemp, you see, is doing it at the crack of dawn. Of course, if he's not in by sunrise, I dock his pay. So he's coming in in the morning, you know, and as he gets in, he comes in face white as a ghost. Couldn't get a single honest, uh, didn't get an honest day of work out of him all day today. He's not getting paid. I'm telling you that. But, but of course he, he you know, he, he said something about, something about seeing something, but he was just a blubbering mess as he came in. And of course, then, then you know, I, I had a, a bunch of other boys didn't show up for work today either, so I can't make heads or tails of it either. Kemp, we are entering the building. I would like you to know that whatever it is that you saw, whatever it is that you are afraid of, me and my comrades here have put down worse. And I assure you that if you'd like this horror to come to an end, it is in your best interest to answer some questions for us so that we may investigate and stop whatever is happening here at the docks. Great. Mm, give, me welcome a, home. give me a persuasion check. <laughs> Did you want to add that, Rudy? Yeah. And, and maybe we can walk you home if it makes you feel better if you're going to help us out on this. Okay. Give me a persuasion check with advantage because Rudy helped you. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, I, I rolled double 18s, um, plus, uh, where am I? Persuasion 6. So, 24. He says, Look, you mean to say that this, this, this strong-looking lady with these axes is gonna walk me home? <laughs> yes. If I talk to you? Absolutely. Oh, that sounds great! <laughs> and he co comes back downstairs. Oh! I just want to go home to my own bed, don't you know? I do. I know that feeling. I know the feeling, too. And it feels mighty fine to get in your own space, in your own bed. And we just want to make sure you get home safe and that no more people are ripped apart. But we heard you may have seen something that might help us oh. in our investigation. You want to tell us about it? Well, oh. well, you see... I was on my way to work, you know, because the dock master has me up at the crack of dawn, you know. So if, if, if I'm not here by, by before sunrise, sunrise, he docks my pay. And, and of course, you know, there, there's the other dock workers that, that they, they, sh they change shift at the end of the night. And I was heading down Gravel Berth Alley. And that, that's when I saw it. That's when I saw it. I waved to him and I, and I thought, I thought, oh, well, that's Kenneth. That's Kenneth there. And then I saw him. And it was two of them, they were ripping them in half. What was ripping them in half? It was all fur and teeth. I could, they, they ripped them in half, and they took his, one of them took his legs, one of them took his arms, and they ran down the drains 
with the, with the whole of them. And I saw that, and I just ran all the way here, as fast as my legs could carry me. And these are the first words that I've been able to get out of my mouth all day. It's reasonable to be frightened of this, of course, but how... Say something furry, some teeth and nails. How tall? It, it, it weren't big. It, it weren't big, maybe maybe about size of the halfling? But it was all covered in fur. And it dragged... Kenneth into the into the drain, you said. Well, they ripped them in half and they dragged them into the drains. This must be tough, Kemp, but it is important. Has have you seen any others like it? Well, they said that when, that Eric Eric Wayne, right? Mm -hmm. that, that, that someone else said that 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 was the that he got torn apart they, they they tore open his belly and all his guts were gone and and no one's even heard from stanley in a week and and kyle they said that, uh, that someone found his hand how would they know what's his hand well everyone could recognize kyle's hand <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> kyle's hand Understood. Kemp, where did you see this attack? Can you take us there? Oh, it's on my way home. It was down Gravel Birth Alley. Well, what say the three of us escort you home, and on the way you can point out the drain that you saw your friend get dragged into, and then we'll drop him off at home, and then on our way back, we'll, um, Take a look. The Dock Master. Well? Don't you know, boy? He slaps him outside. Say thank you! They're walking you home, free of charge! You know how much you'd have to pay for that kind of security. First, we're just doing our civic duty to the people here in this town that have shown us so much hospitality since we've been here the least we could do we have our interests in what is causing these attacks please help us discover the true nature of it oh, all right oh don't you know I, I i know the way i know the way it's i'll show you the way come on you know what, even as we go, is there like a, a blanket or something nearby? Uh, there's a fishing net from a pile of barrels. Uh... <laughs> no, does he have a cloak? No. Oh. You put, just wrap him in fishing net, and we'll <laughs> take him home. <laughs> there, I take the fishing there, net, there. and I wrap it around him like it's a cloak, and I use prestidigitation to, to like... I guess warm it. <laughs> I can comfort him a little bit. <laughs> like this is the best I can do with what I got. All right. There you go, friend. You're wrapped in warm fishing net and being escorted uh, oh. home. It's, it's oh well. Oh, how did you know I like to be cuddled up in all the fishing nets, <laughs> just like a hammock on a on a on a ship? Just had a you know how to had do an it, intuition, you know. I, I have ten children at home. Let me show you. And I take out my wallet with all my kids on it, and I say, "These are all my kids. I have ten of them. I take care of them. My grandbabies too. I know how to take care of someone that's been not feeling great. You know, not feeling great. Not been through a lot." <laughs> you lead him uh, through through the. With that, you lead him through. Well, he leads you uh, through the uh, um, the stone key towards Gravelberth Alley. And which is uh, actually on one of the far sides of, uh, sides of town through a district known as Tidebottom, um, and uh, the aptly named Tidebottom for it is also prone to flooding, uh, particularly when a very high tide comes in. And as he he points to you, he says, <sighs> "He's like, that's 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 where it happened. That's where it's, uh, it's just, I usually take that shortcut down." Travelworth Alley, it lets me get to work two minutes faster so the dock master doesn't dock my pay. Of course. How about I stay here with you, Wilhelm? Wrath, you want to go check it out? 
Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll go investigate. We should get him home, but l- let me see if there's anything. Rath? Just a quick glance. Yeah, is it a is it a large grate? I want to check out the grate. It's getting dark, uh, and the alley is not well lit. But as you head down into the in into this alleyway, which is a back alley between two rows of how of 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 houses, uh, there's a uh, you can see that in the mi- the middle of the alley, which is really only about four feet wide, it's very very uh, thin thin and, and scrawny. And then it uh, as as you come into it, it opens up into a larger kind of back alley sort of plaza that's about ten feet wide. And there, there is a storm. Uh, you can see that there's a state, like a, it curves downward. It's like I was coming from from that direction, from the other side when I saw it. And you can see that where the alley opens up, there's a, a, a beaten down halfway fence and several broken barrels. <laughs> and then it an amount of blood that looks like a human being burst like a water balloon. And the blood's still there. The blood's still there. It hasn't. It, it, there's there's been a bit of rain today, but it hasn't. And you can see the blood is streaking down and into uh, what was a closed drain, but the entrance way has been shattered. I I pull out my moon touched rapier and allow it to glow in the alleyway, and I start kind of waving it around the entrance to the sewer grate, and I'm looking for. Um, any sort of indication that uh, he said fur and teeth. So I'm looking for maybe a clump of fur or something to allude to the fact that maybe it was not human. Give me a um, investigation check. Uh, That's going to be a 20. You find a serrated tooth broken off, covered in blood, about two inches long. I pull the tooth. A sh- a, sorry, a sharp tooth, not a serrated tooth. The sharp yeah. tooth. It's like serrated. Oh my god. I I, I yeah. show it to Wrath, and I'm like, not human, if you ask me. No, my teeth are normal. Uh, hmm. <laughs> Do you discern any sort of um, magical sm- properties? The here? smell of the sewage coming up is palpable too. Uh, um, I sure hope we aren't going down there. I want to ask uh, Camp, I say, now, is this where all the the parts were found? I know you saw Kenneth get tragically taken here, but is this oh. the area where they all get taken? No, 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 no. E- e- Eric, e- Eric, he, li- he lives towards Shanty Wharf. That way, people, people said that they... they they, they, they saw, they found what remained of him in the middle of the street, and and Stanley. Well, n- nobody's even seen him, and and well, Kyle. They they just knew him because his his hand had a thumbs up and it washed up in the heap out where the sewer pours out. Out where the sewer goes. Hmm. Was was Stanley in the middle of the street? Were there uh, any signs that blood led to a sewer drain or grate? No. Uh, I don't know if anyone looked. He died about five nights ago, so things have probably been cleaned up there around. Uh, Still. Friends, it seems that the creatures must be attacking from the sewer. It's the most likely scenario. These dock workers appear to be just innocent bystanders, not targets. Of course. And it is our duty to make sure that we put a stop to this. Yeah. And has it really just been the morning crew that's been going missing, or crews that come at all times of day? The, the, it's all been at night. All night, okay. Well, sun's starting to go down. Let's make sure we get you home. And, gentlemen, we can come back here and take a broader look. All right. It's uh, only another 15 minutes to walk him home from here. Uh, he lives in a small tenement building with about 50 other people. <laughs> uh, and he's got a nice cozy little mattress hammock up on the side and he cozies up himself and uh, says goodnight and he says, thanks. Thank you for your time and we'll see what we can do about figuring out what's going on around here. 
With that, you head back to Gravel Birth Alley. Nice the way the I tooth. see it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I hand you the tooth. Does it look like any animal tooth that I'm familiar with? Didn't if you didn't know know any better, it's it's not canine. Mm. It's not feline. It's more like a rodent's tooth. Rodent? Never known any rodent to have teeth like this. That would be abnormal and odd. You know. It would be a, a rodent of truly unusual size. <laughs> you know, I've heard stories. Uh they're they're just stories passed down, but there's an old story that got passed around uh, Altbrook a long time ago about um, you know, in the sewers the rats grew to tremendous proportions, some as big as as, as a chicken or a duck and um, I mean, this one looks a, a wee bit bigger, but you know, there are those folklore tales that get passed around of large rats in the sewers um, but never, never something, hmm, something like this. Perhaps, perhaps it's something else. Perhaps you're mistaken. Although with the water around here, the, what the delirium has been doing, who uh, knows how it can affect the wild laugh around cities. Hmm. V very true. I mean, Delirium could have an effect on the local wildlife and local whatever pests. it is, it's in there. And I'm gonna Does start Bruce to sweat the tooth. <laughs> <laughs> I give it to you. Thank you. No, I don't see any reason to go tromping around in the sewers, right? Why don't we lure them out here? Okay, you, you will be the innocent bystander. Rudy and I will wait in the shadows for you to be attacked. Now, now and... I do, I do well in the shadows. <laughs> I do well as bait. Uh, no, I'm gonna look for uh, uh, an entrance into the sewer while while Wilhelm is defending his. Uh... <laughs> I just don't want to get my boots wet again. It's they've they've just dried. Oh, okay. Wilhelm, well, I can always. You know, use a little bit of magic to make him dry again. Don't worry well, about that. This is why I was pushing so hard for milking the academy. River has access to funds that go beyond the reaches that I can acquire. We need to make this a urgent matter. They have they have the funds. We well, can we can have a write off for a wet boot fund. Um, <laughs> You really had her going. I was really impressed with your ability to manipulate her with your fear of being eaten alive. I found that riveting. Uh, thank, thank you, Rath. Um, I think. It tugged on her emotions. <laughs> it, it leveraged us into a position to receive a monetary sum. You know, well, Rath, people do say I'm... Uh, quite skilled with um, my vocabulary and, and, and the way I present myself. So I do happen to have that effect on people. Thank you for noticing. Uh, what is it that we're doing again? Going into the sewers? We're going into the sewers. That's what you said, a, Rath. I'm, I'm looking for a sewer. There's uh, one obvious entrance. The, the sewer grate itself. I pop it open. It's already been broken open. <laughs> oh, that, was easy. that was so easy. Should we get Bruce to go in and take a look? Bruce is uh, gonna pop down. Okay. Give me a quick scan, and uh, if everything looks uh, berries, I'm gonna hop mm -hmm. down. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, we will bring up our map. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, hey, Houdini. You're right over there. <laughs> there we go. Okay. The way leads down into the end point, uh, into a collection point of a sewer line. So from here, you can see that, there, that this is actually an access point 
Uh, and as Bruce comes down, you can see all in the ground in this area is just a solid streak of wet blood. Like someone just took a paintbrush, dunked it into a thing of red paint, and just smeared. And it stretches. Um, and the, the line of blood basically stretches like that. We have um, a little red line to follow. And, and in fact, it, it actually kind of stretches in uh, uh, in two distinct lines, as if the top and the bottom were dragged separately. <laughs> <laughs> Rule that number six, sexy. there's always a trail to follow, and I think this might be one of our most obvious ones. How efficient. I say we go down and we follow the trail. Well. It smells down here. It reeks of fecal matter, um, backed up sewage, and also, like, just the cooking of multiple homes. Like, you know, when you go into an apartment building and like you can smell everyone's cooking and it's like awful, that plus crap. Mm. <laughs> oh. I tie like a piece of fabric around my face. Why is it that every job we go on involves us walking into some terrible smelling places like can't we go into a a clean house and search for for flowers or something like it's just something a little nicer than constantly trudging through human waste the sewer pipe the nice. sewer, the uh the sewer pipe right here burps loudly and there's just this, this gushing of like gunk just blah, spills out into the muck of the middle <laughs> All right, I'd say we it what you said it goes along here. And a hop over yeah. hop over the uh and just keep kind of confidently walk through this uh this sewer, keeping my eyes peeled for any sort of uh Okay. I have my blade out so I can movement. see. Okay. <laughs> as you as you continue forward along, you can see uh Oh, no, you need to reveal things, not conceal things. There you go. There we go. Here's what you see. Um, the passageway branches off into a much wider corridor here, but opposite over, over in this corner, you can see that there are maybe six, seven massive rats, like the size of a small dog. And the group of them are tearing back and forth and fighting and screeching over what looks to be a human foot. I think we found those who are uh, abducting people. Say we approach silently. The streak of blood, however, moves up in this direction. Mm. Should we sneak past and continue our trail, or should we investigate these uh, large large rats how large are the rats uh they are probably about 18 inches long never seen a rat that large before you may be onto something <laughs> with the delirium uh are they and you said there's seven of them yeah <sighs> there's six now one of them looks like it's been killed by the others and now three of them are fighting over the foot and the other three are fighting over the corpse of the other rat the rat <laughs> They're distracted. Let's follow the blood. All right. Uh, we're going to try to sneak past, I guess. Okay. As you come up, a little bit of uh, a little bit of street light spills down from above here as a large sewer grate. Um, oop. Reveal. Not conceal. Uh, there's a large intersection here with several bridges across. Um, that leads up, in, in fact, to, towards another uh, branching intersection. And um, just reveal a couple more areas here because we, we got a lot for now. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Uh, and as you all come around the corner, um, you're sneaking past the group, of, the group there? You can all give yeah. me a stealth check then, please. I get a... 22 18 wow okay 
And then all of you can roll me a d6. <gasps> oh, this is the scary one. Six. That's a five. Six. One. Okay. Six and a one. <laughs> okay. Woo. I still don't know if it's six. You a hear six, though, resounding like down the sewer, you hear a terrible keening noise. <laughs> Um, as careening <laughs> down from this direction comes a strange sight. Um, Wilhelm, you can see it for, you see it first. Uh, and I just got to get onto the right layer here. Bounding down the sewer line and around the corner comes uh, oop. okay this is the only issue with roll 20 is being on the right thing at the right time there we go What's gonna happen? Comes a creature. It is a brown, slippery, furry body covered in ragged leathers, carrying with it a spear and a shield. It comes round the corner, and you hear it cry out, Yes, yes, yes! Get out of the spray! Yes, yes, yes! Get them! Get them! Get them! And as it com comes around, all of us, uh, Wilhelm, you see, then further down over here, down the further way of the sewer, spinning out and around, okay, there's my selection tool. There we go. Now we're on, now we're in business here. Oh, no. Rudy, there's a rat with a spear coming down the sewer. I There comes Ooh. another one, and oh, another one, spoke. and Karma. another one. R Rudy, there are many rats. And another one. And did many it talk? It uh, said words. And another one. And they're coming from this direction, and the group of them start to charge, because coming around the corner following the rat that just screamed comes walking on its legs a creature about as tall as a man with rubbery leather skin and the head of a fish and it's got a roughly hewn stone axe and it comes up to the rat and it attacks it and all of a sudden a calamitous battle erupts between fish and rats in the sewers <laughs> you hear the scribe and the rattlings go, yeah, I died, I did, I did, I did, I did, Roll for initiative. Wilhelm <laughs> thinks back around the corner and tries to disappear and just turns to his two comrades. There is a walking fish attacking talking rats. I, I repeat, a, a walking fish attacking talking rats there are spears the fish has an axe there are arms and, and legs and armor what rudy wrath what do we do are we surprised by this i'm not surprised by this it's a bit I'm, shocking but we, you're not surprised there is, i'm sorry uh, uh, bruce fish. is now turned into hungry. a big beastly wolf it is not surprise me when i see walking talking animals you know, to, to the extent where I've seen brains come at me, this is like semi-normal in my world, to be honest. Oh. <laughs> oh. You know, my kids are shifters, too. Do they turn into walking, talking fish rats? They're not fully walking, talking fish rats, but Wait, they have they animalistic are they... features no, about sorry, them. There's... There's fish and there's rats. What do we do? We engage? Is this the problem? I think these rats are the ones eating people. I mean, Wrath, can I see that tooth again? It. 
I it, look at it and I'm like, do you think this is the the fish or the rats? It's definitely the rat. The <laughs> the fish don't look like they have teeth like that. All right. Well, I think the the rats may be more of the problem than the fish. I don't want to go killing the fish if it didn't have anything to do with ripping people apart. <laughs> yes, initiative got vetoed. Uh, <laughs> you guys need to roll because you, the, these guys are fighting each other, and I need to. And <laughs> this you don't have this much time for, for chatter. <laughs> We're just calmly. Bruce is licking his lips. He's looking around There's the like corner. A whole battle, yeah. All right, Bruce can have the fish. We'll take care of the rats. We'll see. I got a fifteen, by the way. I got an eleven. I got a fourteen. <laughs> pretty far away at this point we're just talking amongst ourselves I mean it's very concerning at least to me apparently Rudy is just like ah fish and rats in the sewers fighting Will normal help. every day what do you got uh, 11 okay Rudy 15 okay and uh, Rath uh, 14 okay 14 baby so actually it'll so as we break into our order Um, the rattlings go first. Uh, I will just reveal some more areas here first. So I have a little bit more to work with. Good, that worked. Okay. Looks good. Something else got revealed. Did it? That's, that's okay. That's, I meant to do that. Okay, so the back to options tokens. There we go. Great, excellent. Okay, so hurtling around the corner come these uh, horrific rat monsters, and several of them uh, leap across, bounding across the the way, and two more of them slink out of the shadows. Uh, and the they begin to attack the front line of the the fish men, um, and in a hail of attacks, um, the three uh, ratlings uh, that you see before you leap upon this fish man who came forward with the axe and leap up and surround him like a like a pack of wild animals. And begin stabbing and stabbing at at uh, at the creature uh, before before him, and uh, cut the cut him down, um, and begin tearing apart. And one of them even grabs on it, on it, reaches into his head, pulls out his eye, and eats it. Um, and the two over here, um, the these ones begin throwing their spears, and others stab with rusty knives at the one uh, before them here. Um, and uh, leaving this one uh, extremely wounded and uh, and bloodied, and that will be uh, the rattling's turn. So we go to Rudy. Ooh, um. Okay, I am going to. Can I ready? I can ready a spell. If yes, it does I require should... your concentration, but you can ready a spell. Okay, I'm going to move up here to this corner. And if um, if any of them come close enough to see me at this corner, I'm going to ready the action of Firebolt. Okay. To burn their faces. Sounds good. Other than that, I, I want to see if the rats take on the, the fish people. I'm really curious about this dynamic happening down in the sewer. Are we saving the fish people? Are we? I don't know. All right. It's a survival of the fittest. Wrath, it is your turn. Protecting the innocent. These are simply monsters. I'm going to give you a free move up to here because you're quite far back, so you can be there. <gasps> Thank you. Oh. Uh, is it? Oh, no, they probably see me. Um... <laughs> they're 
there's there's a lot happening. Uh it looks like the rats are driving the fish people back. I'm going to sit back and wait if something comes uh, after us. Uh, I'm going to uh, ready a uh, Eldritch Blast in its face. Okay. Wilhelm, it is your turn. We're, we're not going to help anybody? Uh, sewer fights have a way of working themselves out, Wilhelm. Uh, we need not get into the petty squabbles. We we should be the ones who pick up when the dust settles. Uh, Wilhelm is going to try to make a dash move across the bridge and oh. over to this wall. <laughs> okay. Um, give me a stealth check with disadvantage. Uh, with disadvantage, it is a 26. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, like a shadow, Wilhelm bounds across uh, and uh, hides on the other side. And, uh, oh. Oh no, I get a natural 20 on my perception check, but they only have a plus five bonus. So they, even with. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so they think they see something move, but there's too much commotion happening. And that's what I was banking on is I want a better vantage point to move into an attack position. I dart across and I slide up against the wall and I'm pressed up there and I look back at Rudy and Wrath and nod. All right. The fish folk. One of them cries out with a chortling voice. They, they've got the, this kind of this purplish fishy skin and they're just wearing rags, but they've got shields and stone swords and axes. And one of them cries out, In the name of the Duchess! And it charges forward <laughs> towards one of the ratlings. <laughs> Watching this. I happen. look back at you guys and I like mouth the words like royalty. And, and the ratling just rolls out of the way. Um, and the, the attack misses. The wounded one uh, strikes back towards one of the ratlings and actually lands its attack, smashing the, the, the rat-like creature in the face and uh, splintering it all in, in the front, and it steps forward. Uh, this other one dives into the water and uh, uh, fly, uh, flushes up around and actually hits this ratling and, but, and bloodies it. Uh, and this, uh, uh, another one comes up from the back and this one has this big pincer and a whip and it cracks the whip, uh, at, uh, um, at, uh, one of the, uh, the ratlings. Uh, but the, again, the ratling rolls out of the, out of the way of the, of the whip as it cracks it with the, the large, large pincer. Um, neither side seems to have an advantage. The... The ratlings press the attack. Um, two, these two here pull out slings and fire shots at the uh, the central fish folk that's come across the bridge. And with uh, with several bullets and a few more stab wounds, uh, this one is slain. Uh, and the other fish folk here is also slain too. Mm. These three ratlings quickly begin to overwhelm and with a critical strike stab the third one in the heart leaving only one of the of the fish folk alive with, with a uh, terrible volley of attacks rudy what are you going to do i mean they have royalty we should probably help them if they have royalty the duchess um <laughs> so i kind of i Wilhelm and I kind of give him the signal like let's get in there um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to dash so I can get about here and then I'm going to action surge to do my my battle axes on this rat <laughs> where's Houdini? Come on! Uh, I can go. go 60 feet I think. Yeah he he's go. got the range. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Um Wah, wah. Um, 19 to hit. Uh, that is a hit. Eight damage. Okay. 
This thin and lithe and tiny rattling uh, uh, rolls with the blow, but is wound and is wounded by it. One more. Oh, 13 to hit. I'm afraid that's a miss. Want, want. One more. That's even worse. Nope. It's just shorter than I'm used to. Hitting. Oh, jeez. And then, yeah. Yep. That's it. Okay. Wrath, it is your turn. Um... Seeing my comrades stepping into action, ooh, <laughs> um, I'm gonna step out from uh, from behind the the corner, and I'm going to cast uh, Hunger of Hadar right in the middle of all these rattlings. Oh man, where do you want to center it? So I I uh, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna put Bruce right in it because Bruce is the Almighty. So I'm basically, it, it's fine. Like I want basically Houdini to be on the outside of it. So maybe like where Bruce is. Okay. So uh, I start mumbling something in an, and 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 you can kind of feel like a coldness in the air as, as Bruce sort of disappears for a moment as he moves towards the area. And then, and then it's almost like a sparking, like a, and then, and then like this rip, uh, through space and time. Do you want to center it so that these, the, these two are in or so that that one, the one over here is in? Uh, the, the one over there can stay out. Yeah. We want to okay. get okay. all of those, okay. all of that Unless business. Unless you want to get Houdini, that's all. So the horrible slurping <laughs> space opens up, revealing a mass of cattails and tongues, making slurping and silent swishing noises with the, the with the, um, hundreds of aberrant cat's eyes and disembodied grins. Um, looking through the space in between uh, the, the the indescribable space between the cat door. <laughs> Is it alive or dead? Who knows? You must open it to collapse it. Okay. Do we? Uh, do we? Do they make their damage when it appears, or uh, it starts its turn and ends its turn? Okay. Great. So I don't check for damage until they they actually start mm -hmm. off there. Okay. Wilhelm, buddy, it's over to you. Uh, Wilhelm bursts around the corner and sees this horrible tear in reality, which <laughs> is again reminiscent of all of his recent nightmares. And he gets a little thrown off for a second. Can I see through the hunger of Hadar? No. It's this oh. black void. <laughs> uh, he like he goes to turn and like stops in his tracks and actually comes out over here. And um, looks for a, a shot, and actually he's going to... How, how far is this away? 60 feet. Um, so that's going to be a disadvantage shot with my crossbow. Okay. Uh, that's going to be an 18. It's a hit! And I'm going to use sneak attack. Uh, that's going to be 14 damage on the rattling there. Nice. It is bloodied, but it survives the shot. It cries out, Aah! And while it's, while it's crying out, I'm going to take a second shot at it. Oh, this one with disadvantage is only going to be a 10. Uh, that is a miss, I'm afraid. It, it darts out of the way. All right, and then I uh, and technically uh, you actually can't apply the sneak attack damage if you attack with with, uh, with disadvantage. Right. Yeah. Okay. You know what? Then in that case, you're you're very right. I just always want to do sneak attack. Uh, that's only going to be eight damage. I, I take it back. Okay. So that does still leave it bloodied, but uh, not quite as wounded. Well. 
Good. Okay. Take that. Uh, most of the fish folk are dead, except for the one in the hunger of Hadar who fails at saving throw and takes how much damage? So they, they start by taking 2d6 cold damage when they start their turn. Okay. Um, and then any creature that ends its turn needs to succeed on the saving throw or take 2d6 acid damage. Okay. So this, uh, uh, do you want to roll that damage for me for the, the one fish folk remaining? <laughs> Uh, eight damage. It goes, oh, the horror, the horror. And, and you, you hear some flopping feet running, running back, but uh, it's not clear which direction it's gone to y'all. Um, so we come to the ratlings who immediately take damage from being in the area. Can you roll it for me for all these ratlings that are in it? Money. Uh, ten. Okay. Ten damage. So several hungry cat maws and long snaking cat like tongues uh devour all the rattlings <laughs> and they suck them in and you can see it's actually going into bruce's belly slowly like you can see it kind of like pulsing and pumping <laughs> uh these two rattlings are horrified at that uh and this one is going to use its cunning action to disengage do you have sentinel rudy no okay so it disengages moves back back from you and it uh and this one also begins moving moving back and away but as they do so they smile at you wickedly with a toothy grin you can see one's got a snapped off fa frontal fang and the two of them reach into their pouches um and they both of them are drawing back their slings but as they do so they each pull out a piece of delirium and they load it into the slings and draw it back and fire them at you. What? Say what? Uh, the first shot goes completely wide, but the second shot gets a 22 to hit. Shield! <laughs> <laughs> okay, you call up the shield, deflecting the, uh, the, the shard of delirium, and there's a loud crash uh, as the magic in interacts, and it... it, it uh, uh, the shards land at your feet. For a wild magic <laughs> Magic combining. Oh yeah, roll me a d6. Yay! <laughs> Six! Uh, okay, so wild magic averted in that case. Darn it. <laughs> I mean, I mean... <laughs> okay. Rudy, it is your turn. Um, okay. I am intrigued by this delirium that they're throwing, so I follow them. Uh is this a is this a bridge over top of here? Uh that's one of the pipes from before. Okay. Why not? We'll walk on the pipe. Uh and I take some more swings at this gentleman rat. Doo -doo -doo. Oh crap! Uh, I don't think it's going to survive that. Roll the damage. Ooh. What is it? Red Queen. More hit. More 18. crits per capita. Uh, yeah. What happens to this rattling? Oh, I behead it because, you know, that's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Your bloodlust. Insatiable. Um, and I don't know how. Let me see how far I went. Do, do, do. Okay, it's 20, and I'm, well, no, hold on. How deep is this water? <laughs> um, hard to say, but you could leap that. With my remaining? I don't know if I can What's your that. What's your speed? I thought you were 40. I'm 30. Oh. Yeah. Um, so, instead, I'm going to take... You my hand axe yeah you can throw your axes i'm gonna pop out a hand axe and toss it that way um oh yeah 24 to hit all right that is a hit nine damage nice and with with two weapon fighting do i, I is it throwable yeah for the yeah. bonus action yeah, yeah why not 
If I'm wrong about that, I don't care. <laughs> um, my other hand axe, 19 to hit. Also a hit. And that's 11 damage. Uh, the, the two hand axes actually cut it down. And it is slain. No one gets away. Two axes in the back. Anything else, Rudy? No. No, I'm good. Wrath, it is your turn. Uh, I'm going to move up with uh, Bruce and 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 kind of make our, uh, make my way with danger kind of averted. I'm going to actually uh, dash up and try to collect some of that delirium that I see it, saw get shot at. Uh, sure. At Rudy. And Wilhelm? Uh, there's still a giant blob of monstrosity in front of me. Raph. It's fine. Everything's fine. R Raph, I'd like to I'd like to talk to the fish person now, but there seems to be a, a tear in the fabric of reality blocking my path. Um I'm going to walk up as close as I'm willing to get. I'm still like a few feet away from this horrible tear and I and I try to yell through the slurps and sounds. Excuse me, fish person. No! We'd like We'd like to speak to you. The the rats are gone. L let us just wait where you are. Are you negotiating? With he might monster? know more about where the rats are, and and perhaps the Duchess. If if they're at war, and the rats are the ones going to the surface eating people, then perhaps the fish folk might be kind in helping us investigate. Make your persuasion check, Wilhelm. If you if want now, we can behead them as well. I got an 18. Okay. Uh, it's just, oh, no, dis dismiss your spell. Dismiss it. I will speak with you. Wilhelm, there are reports of people diving into the water and choking to death. Yes. We have two afflictions and two monstrous humanoid races that we've discovered that are in a war beneath the surface of this town. And we could either kill the, our way through all of them and not discover the truth or okay. communicate with them <laughs> and see what they can tell us. Investigation. This right. one fish and three of us, I'm not afraid of it. All right. I'm going to, I'll, I'll turn off the, the hunger of Hadar. Bruce says, those were delicious. I would also like a dish of squished fish, though, please. Yes, I'm working on it, Bruce. My comrades are making it hard to feed you. Oh. As the spell fades, the 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 trembling creature bears his his pincer spear, uh, and and says, "What horrible magic is this?" Oh, oh, you control it. Wrath. Um, step forward, Sir Fish. Um, and I, I actually, I look over at Rudy. I'm like, Rudy, you're, you're good with animals. Um, can, can you humor me for a moment? Can, I'll, do can my we... I'll do my best. And I hop over the, the sewage. What do you need? What do you need? I, you say I'm good with animals. I'm all right with animals. You you literally tried to talk me into sparing. Or, I don't oh. know. You, make up your mind, Rudy. Oh. McGurg, whip whip, swish, a wish wash. Oh, my friends, they're dead. They fought bravely, but you have you it. I'm glad you saved me, but I wish that you had of intervened on behalf of us fish a little bit sooner. But had you not arrived when you did, I suppose I would be dead too. This is true. Looking on the bright side of things, you're alive at least. <laughs> my, my name is Buckum Buckum. I am a loyal foot soldier in the service of the Duchess. Oh. Like a, like a, a duchess. 
on the surface like a, a people royalty? The great Duchess of Ash Bay. I mean, I've, I've never heard of a Duchess of Ash Bay. You haven't heard of the Duchess of Ash Bay? Oh. There's the Duke? You land dwellers are so ignorant. Silence, fish <laughs> thing from beyond the stars or the seas or beneath the surface. And it, my future cat's food. Answer me this. Why are people going missing? There have been those turned up, ripped to shreds, and others have dove in with madness in their eyes into the waters. Explain yourself. Oh, well, you see, the, we are but simple people. Uh, we have come from a great and horrible city, and the Duchess led us down the great wide river here where we have made our new home. And we have, and, and, sh and, and so we mean to, 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 to be here in peace. But these rats, they followed us here, and they kill us and eat us. It's horrible. What, hold on a moment there. Buckham, Buckham is what you said your name was, sir? Yes! Okay, uh, you came from a city down the river. Yes! And the rats followed you from that city? That Well, the Duchess did. The Duchess, she came down. That was before my time, of course. I am new to the Duchess's court, and I've known my whole life here. But the, but many moons ago, the Duchess tells us that she led our people here for a new home where we would be safe from the horrible monsters that eat at us like the rats. And then they followed us here, and they're eating us now. Yeah, I would say you haven't really got out of the situation you were trying to get away from. So... Uh... No, no, it's true, but but many more are here. Are the 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 Duchess is calling all to her arms to fight back against the horrible furred ones, and finding new allies. And we are here to take the fight to them. So let me get this straight: the Duchess isn't from the surface or surface dweller, as you call it. Is she like you? Oh, the Duchess is beautiful and a glorious leader of us. Truly noble to behold. <laughs> Wilhelm, I, am I hearing this right? I, they, they have a, a like a like a fish queen down here in these sewers. I I have my crossbow trained on the fish like i'm i'm giving him the chance to speak but i'm i'm cautious no 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 the duchess does not dwell here she cares not for coves of of man's stone no more she dwells in a great palace on the bay palace on the bay i have a question for you uh, sir fish very simple question, and I would request that you answer as honestly as you can. In this war that you are waging against these um, rats here, oh. have the fish caused the death of any innocent surface dwellers? Is there a chance that a malady performed by your people has caused surface dwellers to wander into the sea and die? Oh, 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 oh. By by no means, of co of course not. The the but but you must talk to to our our leader here. The great archpriest Cookie has been sent by the Duchess, in fact, to help the surface folk. She has made a great remedy to cure the sickness that ails the people. I've I've heard of this. I've heard of this. Mm. We you must definitely take go talk us to, them. to the cookie. 
cookie. <laughs> Another question for you, and I do agree, we should go see the cookie. But do you happen to know where the rats are operating out of? Do, you, do they have a, um, a base of operations oh. here in the sewers? We have searched long for their hidden lair, but they are burrowing deep into the earth where the water is not, and they have a horrible beast. Two of them, they speak of the Chungus and the Chonker, two massive, horrible rat beasts, twice the height of the biggest ogre. Uh, so Chungus, Chunker, and you're going to take us to see Cookie. <laughs> Do I have all this correct? Is this, is this the way of things? Yes, yes, I can take you to, to the Cookie and she will show you her remedy. It might save you surface dwellers from the sickness that ails you. I, I turn to Rudy and Rath, and I'm like, I, I have a new idea. I think that somewhere in Schaffberg, I've completely lost my mind, and I may be hallucinating horribly. I, I do no, not I'm know. No, see I'm seeing this too. Don't worry, Will. Wilhelm, it's time to wake up. I just look at you. Wake up. It's time to wake up. The cat looks dreaming. directly at you and says, this is not a dream. <laughs> Oh. We're playing with his mind. We're we're trying to make sense of all this. You know what? It's so easy. Welcome. Take us to Cookie. If you can get us some remedy for what's happening to these people, maybe we can help you take care of these Chungus and Chunger or whatever rap their names are. Because oh, I am sure that if you were to help us, the Duchess would bestow upon you the greatest honor, knighthood. I, I mean, I'm sure we do appreciate that, but I, I think I'm we gonna, just, go ahead. Uh, no, 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 you finish. I think we just really want to make sure that the surface dwellers are, are not getting eaten anymore. That is our main goal here, but if you can help us with the other thing as well, then no, no, be fine of you. We would never do anything so barbaric as devour the surface dwellers. I, I'm going to lean over to Rudy and like, so that the fish folk can't hear me, I'm going to kind of like lightly whisper to her. I haven't ruled out the idea that perhaps the, uh, the the cure that they have is actually what's causing people to wander into the sea. We haven't discerned that yet, but perhaps talking to Cookie might reveal some truths. We won't know until we talk to them. Then. Be wary and don't accept any um, gifts, because they may be similar to the gifts we found in that elven temple that we were being offered. What was that rule you had about traps? <laughs> Yes, if you suspect it's a trap, it probably is. Well, we could suspect it's a trap beyond our guard, but I think this is a lead that might... I'm not, I'm not hearing any, you know, malicious intent from this well, particular fish person. It's the rats I'm more concerned about. They were pretty fasty. I agree, but we don't know exactly what these fish consider help the help that they may be, may be offering the surface folk. Remember that um, creature that tried to eat my brain said that he too was here to help. It's true. But he was a bit of a, a bit of a different sort, wouldn't you say? I mean, we're talking to a fish that's walking and speaking to us. I haven't ruled out anything. And again, I am concerned about my well-being mentally. But I do say that we follow it and see what truths we can uncover. Rath, what do you think? I agree. The, they might be unbeknownst to them affecting the surface people in a very unusual way. I am worried that there is fallout from both of these types of creatures. We must rid... I'm going to say this in <laughs> your minds. We must rid the sewers of both of them if Transmit is to be free. I, Let's take it one step at a time. The way I see it, any threat that we reveal will be destroyed. 
course. It makes sense, but let's determine if it's a threat or if they're actually here to help. Well, as Bakum Bakum begins to lead you through the sewers to Priestess Cookie, <laughs> we will have to find out what happens next week. Bakum Bakum. <laughs> wow. Rock'em Sock'em. Rock'em Sock'em uh, fish people. I love these names. <laughs> And poor Kyle! <laughs> Chungus oh. and Chunker? Chungus and Chunker. And Cookie. Oh, cookie. <laughs> and Noodles. Oh, you know, uh, you, gotta, you gotta cut the horror with humor. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Well, oh, that was... <laughs> exciting that's fun indeed well that is where we'll end for tonight uh but a big thank you as always uh to the whole crew uh from for me to kelly jill and joe for for playing and uh press f if to show your respects for for kyle running uh running the chat <laughs> hopefully yes. we'll find the rest of you soon buddy <laughs> uh. Yes, a, a very large thank you to Kyle for participating in this stream tonight, both in the chat and appearing as another guest appearance. Kyle has appeared a few times in the campaign, <laughs> always as a hand. Um, and also a huge thank you to our dungeon master, Monty Martin, for running the glorious horror comedy filled sewer expedition that is tonight's stream. I miss uh, the sewers. <laughs> I thank you so much for bringing back two very lovable <laughs> races that are both problematic in the worlds of Drakenheim. Uh, so thank you for that. <laughs> and, uh, and a big uh, thank you to uh, uh, everyone that uh, all the amazing creators that um, that brought us some of our incredible assets. Uh, they're produced by talented artists. They've given us permission to use them in our stream games, but you can use them at your table as well. Please. Uh, support them. Uh, we have Roll20 uh, for the Virtual Tabletop Battle Maps by Alex Vendar of Neutral Party and Ross McConnell of Two Minute Tabletop. Uh, we have custom maps created using Dungeon Fog and Wonder Draft, uh, player character artwork by Jeremy Cole, NPC token artwork by Matthias Bourbon, monster token artwork from the D&D 5e Monster Manual and other source books. We have spell effects tokens by uh, Gabriel Picard, music by Tabletop Audio, and all of this coming from the brain of uh, Monty Martin. So thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store. You can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dude shirts, including the return of Yes, Yes, Yes. <laughs> uh, now combined with um, Wayfinger the Ducks, uh, as well as um, the Desk Warden. So take a look at that, bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Our videos and our live streams were made possible thanks to the incredible generosity of our Patreon community. If you enjoy the work that we create here on YouTube, Twitch, and beyond, please consider becoming a patron of our channel. You can find out how by following the links in the description below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. And if you do join our Patreon, make sure to join us in the exclusive Discord community, which is exclusive to our patrons, where you can join us on there to chat about what's going on in Drakenheim. You can get behind the scenes information from Monty. You could talk to us about our characters and ridiculous choices and all the shenanigans that occur. You can also just talk to us about all things D&D. We have some amazing uh, chat rooms in there for people to talk. And also, if you join our Discord, you get to to submit questions for our monthly Q&As, which is happening this Thursday. So if you join now, you can get some questions in for Monty and I to answer. We also do a monthly writer's room where you can help participate to future scripts for the Thursday videos that we create. So please join us in Discord and we will chat with you there. Thank you all so much for watching and we will see you next time in the shadows of Drakenheim. <laughs>